Oh, hello! Welcome! I heard you were interested in mental time travel. Well, my name is Annabelle Holmans, and I'm PhD student here in your spin. And today I will show you that time travel is not science fiction. It is very much real. Come on, let's take a look at our time machine. This is my encephalography. Now, this very powerful machine allows to record the magnetic fields that are emitted by the brain activity. Yes. The time machine that I'm talking about is our brain. In it, we have the wonderful ability to imagine ourselves in the past or in the future. In time and memory research, this is what we call mental time travel. It is the ability that allows us to remember the events that we've lived or to plan ahead for events to come. Now, let's explain this in more detail. Our hypothesis is that in order to mentally travel in time, our brain needs to map time, meaning it needs to set the coordinates of events in time and locate them on the mental map. This map is like a timeline, as it binds together past and future events, but also past and future versions of ourselves. You see now why mental time travel is fundamental for memory and planning, but also for our very sense of self. Unfortunately, this system may break down in some cases that we call temporal disorientations, cases where we are lost in time. This can happen in some neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, but also in some psychological diseases, such as depression or schizophrenia. Now, you see why it is so fundamental that we study mental time travel and that we understand how our brain implements this incredible ability. And for this, we will need the help of a current participant. We record the brain activity of this participant with the magnetoencephalography as she is mentally traveling in time. Let's go! Now, let's look at the data. This that you see here is live brain activity. Right now it may look like noise to you, but I can assure you there is an underlying brain pattern there. In order to isolate it, we need to take out the noise. To do this, we can use many recordings of brain activity and average them together. We'll explain to you how we do this. What you see here is one recording of brain activity. During this recording, the participant was mentally traveling to four years in the past. Well, right now it looks like noise, right? Now let's see what it looks like when you average 10 recordings together. And now 50 recordings. And now 100 recordings. See, we managed to cancel out the noise and extract the underlying brain pattern which is unique to mentally traveling four years in the past. We can now do the same thing with eight years in the past and compare these two brain patterns. With this type of analysis, we'll be able to identify the very unique brain patterns that are specific to mentally traveling in the past and in the future at different points in time, something that has never been done before. Pretty cool, right? But the magnetoencephalography machine allows us to do much more refined analysis. Let's take a look back at the raw data. See, in the raw data, you have these sort of waves. These waves are what we call oscillations. Oscillations happen in the brain when a group of neurons activate together in synchrony. And as such, they create a rhythmic pattern that we can record as a neuro oscillation. Oscillations are very important for the brain because they can act as a reference for brain computations. We can think of it as a maestro leading an orchestra. Now, our hypothesis is that a very specific oscillation in the brain, the delta oscillation, can act as a reference for the position of self in time. I'll explain to you what I mean by this. This is a schematic. Let's say that this is a delta oscillation when we are in the present. Our hypothesis is that when we are mentally traveling in time, well, we are essentially shifting our reference in time, and as such, the delta oscillation would shift as well. Now, the further away that we mentally travel in time, the further the oscillation would shift. This would mean that simply from the timing of the peak of the oscillation, we would be able to identify where in time the participant is mentally traveling to. A new and interesting finding, as we would be able to identify the neural mechanisms of mental time travel. This analysis wouldn't be complete before we also identify where, in the brain, this mechanism is taking place. For this, 
who means another machine, the magnetic resonance imager machine. This, unfortunately, we cannot show to you, as the camera would break down under the power of its magnetic field, but it's perfectly safe for humans. This machine emits a perfectly controlled magnetic field which safely resonates with the structure of living tissue. And with this, we'll be able to scan the brain of each participant. We can then realign these brain maps with the activity that recorded in the magnetoencephalography. And as such, we localize precisely where in the brain this activity comes from. Of course, we have some hypothesis on that too. We are partially interested in the hippocampus. This structure is a deeper structure in the brain. It is involved both in memory and spatial navigation. You can say it is much like the GPS of the brain. It can create maps of space and perhaps also maps of time. Remember, the mental timeline. This is where we'll find it. Now, with all of this analysis, we will be able to tell how and where in the brain mental time travel unfolds. This is a novel and ambitious project, but with our dedicated research team and with people like you, who are genuinely interested in our research, we will soon understand the mechanisms that make our brain our own unique time machine. And now, I'm off to more experimentations! Woo!